Hello and welcome to this edition of YPAC CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. On Friday, October 3rd, the City of Yakima and the American Civil Liberties Union submitted separate proposals to U.S. District Court Judge Thomas Rice in response to the judge's ruling in August that determined the current system used to elect city council members violates elements of the Federal Voting Rights Act. Judge Rice ruled on August 22nd that the city's current council election system does not provide Latino voters with enough opportunity to fully participate. The council currently consists of four district-specific seats and three at-large positions. Voters vote only by district in primary elections, but all voters citywide cast ballots in general elections, whether those general elections are for district-specific seats or for the at-large positions. The city has proposed the system be changed to five district-specific seats, which would be voted on only by voters in those districts, both in the primary and the general election, and two at-large seats, which would be voted on by voters citywide. The ACLU has in turn proposed to Judge Rice that all seven council seats be district-specific positions and be only decided by voters in each given district. The ACLU filed a lawsuit more than two years ago on behalf of former city council candidate Rogelio Montes and Yakima resident Mateo Artiega it's not known when Judge Rice might make a decision regarding the two proposals submitted by the city and the ACLU. A $290,000 federal grant will go a long way to helping the city of Yakima's efforts to get more people to fly in and out of the Yakima Airport. The Small Communities Air Service Development Grant will be combined with an equal amount of city funds to both continue to market Yakima Airport and to guarantee revenue to airlines that offer additional flights to and from Yakima. The city applied for the same grant last year, but wasn't awarded any money, so the city used $70,000 of its own money to launch the Fly YKM marketing campaign earlier this year. The campaign has apparently paid off because passenger boardings at the Yakim Airport have increased each month this year since March when the Fly YKM campaign started when compared to 2013. Alaska Airlines, which currently only offers three flights between Yakima and Seattle each day, has indicated it would consider adding a fourth flight to Seattle and possibly even a flight to Portland if passenger numbers increase to a minimum average of 75 percent. That goal is within reach. A final decision by Alaska Airlines regarding adding flights will be made at some point in the future. The Yakima City Council is considering increasing rates for water, sewer, and stormwater to help meet rising costs. And more people came through the Central Washington State Fair turnstiles this year than have recently. With those stories, here's CityCast's Ken Crockett. It could cost more next year for water, sewer, and stormwater services in the city of Yakima. The proposed rate increases in 2015 would pay for investments in capital needs, increased operating costs, and meeting environmental regulations. The largest increase being proposed is 55% for stormwater. Those rates have remained unchanged since 2007. 3% increases in both water and wastewater rates are also being proposed. Water rates were last raised in 2012 and sewer rates were increased in 2011. Overall, the increases would cost a typical single family residence an additional $3.73 a month. The Yakima City Council is expected to take up the rate increase request when they begin reviewing the 2015 budget later this year. Good weather helped to boost attendance this year at the recently concluded Central Washington State Fair. Just over 315,000 visitors went through the turnstiles this year, which is a 17 percent increase from 2013 when cool, rainy weather dampened attendance. This year's fair had the highest attendance in the past five years, and was pushed over the top during the final weekend when warm temperatures and fair attractions greeted nearly 105,000 visitors. Next year's fair will run from September 25th to October 4th. Thank you, Ken. When we come back, CityCast's Sean Davido will take you along as he peeks through the window at a unique art exhibit in downtown Yakima. You're watching YPAC's CityCast. The Yakima Fire Department wants to remind you to have a route out. Create an escape plan and practice it. 
plan two routes of escape from every room and set a meeting place outside of the home. Remember, get out, stay out, and be part of the solution. Last year, the Yakima Arts Commission teamed up with local businesses to launch a new program designed to fill in some empty spaces in downtown Yakima. With more on that project, here's CityCast's Sean Davido. Thanks, Randy. I'm here on Yakima Avenue where the Windows Alive Art Project is in its second year. The project fills empty storefronts in downtown Yakima with local art. Six artists were chosen to fill the downtown windows with their artwork, and each artist also received $250 for their efforts. The artists chosen for this go around are Linda Adams for digital media prints, Gretchen Bartz for painting, Alice Beckstrom for glass art, Carol Fletcher for fiber art, Craig Hotchkiss with sculptures, and Christy Toredo with serigraphs, woodblock prints, and Lena cuts. After the first displays complete their four month run in January, they'll be replaced with a new set of displays that'll go up in February. Projects like these and other recent signature events like the Fresh Hop Ale Festival in downtown Yakima that are held just across the street are just a few things changing the face of downtown Yakima. So come down, check out the artwork, Randy, and back to you. Thanks, Sean, and thank all you as well for joining us for this edition of YPAC CityCast. You can always find out more about events, activities, and issues affecting the city of Yakima by checking out the city's website at yakimawa.gov. You can also find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you on the next edition of YPAX CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. Take care. For more information on YPAX CityCast, call 575-6092.